All across the Paldea region, you've probably noticed these glowing swords stuck into the ground. Well, they're not technically swords and referred to in-game as stakes, and they unlock a group of hidden legendary Pokémon known as the Treasures of Ruin. You'll first learn about this top-secret group of legendaries by attending history class at the Academy. While it's not required to take these history lessons and you can definitely uncover these hidden Pokémon on your own, I do recommend checking out this course to learn more about the lore of Paldea and specifically about these mysterious sealed creatures. During the fourth history lesson, your teacher Miss Ryfort tells the story of a king who loved collecting treasure. One day a merchant showed up and offered the king four treasures which he simply could not resist. These treasures are described as a vessel, a sword, a set of tablets, and a set of beads. However, the very same night the king received these treasures, it is said that his castle crumbled and fell into ruin. The king called forth ancient Pokémon wielders to defeat these rampaging beasts, and the four legendaries of ruin were sealed away somewhere in Paldea. Visiting Miss Ryfort once more, we'll have her reveal the locations of their four shrines on your map. However, finding the 32 stakes to unlock these shrines is completely up to you. Now the first ruinous legendary we're going after is sealed inside the Grass Wither Shrine, and in order to unlock it, you're going to have to find the 8 purple glowing stakes located within the bottom right quadrant of Paldea. And we're going to begin our search for the purple stakes in Artisan, which you should have the Pokemon Center unlocked to fly to, unless you haven't beaten the whole game which I definitely recommend you take this on after completing the main story and having at least all of Goraidon's upgrades unlocked. From the Artisan Pokemon Center, the stake is actually going to be located right next to it, around here I believe, so you can mark it on the map and it'll automatically turn you to face the direction which you marked. Again, I recommend having Goraidon's upgrades because that way you can just climb on up here and you will find the first purple stake. Each time you find one of these stakes, you'll get the exact same message asking if you want to pull it out, which in my expert opinion you should always do considering how expensive kids are these days. Now the next stake is located across this province on this area over here. It's actually pretty close to the South Province Area 3 Watchtower, which you can see off in the distance, so if you have that unlocked, you could fly over to it and maybe make this trek a little bit quicker. Though I find that the loading times can sometimes be just as long as actually walking, so for the sakes of this video, I'm going to try to do the least amount of teleporting and just show you guys. We're going to make our way across the plains from Dragon Ball Z all the way past the Watchtower. Again though, I highly recommend having all of Goraidon's upgrades because climbing and gliding are going to be a necessity or at least make things a lot easier for you when it comes to getting these stakes. As you can see, the next one is over there in the distance. We're going to hop across this canyon and you'll see it at the top of this green area here. That is our second stake. Now there's one more purple stake in this area, but it's actually really close to the South Province Area 3 Pokemon Center, which you should definitely have unlocked. And I know I said I wasn't going to teleport all that much, but even if you don't have it, try to make your way to this Pokemon Center. It's a lot easier to explain where the stake is from here, because you can see it right behind us. This might have been one of the first stakes you ever noticed. At least I think it was the first one that I spotted, but for some reason I could not jump to it for the life of me before Koridon's upgrades. The next one is actually really close by, around this area in the map. You might have noticed I was already facing this sort of bridge-like structure over here. And it's another one you don't necessarily need to glide over to, but it's going to make your life a lot easier. You could also reach it from the opposite end, like from Meza Goza's end, but you'll still need Koraidon's climb ability to get up this little cliff. Our next two stakes are actually really close to each other and can both be reached from the Los Platos Pokemon Center. You can see I've already marked it on the map here, but I'll remark it just so that the game turns us around because the next stake is actually up on this little mountain. Again, you could walk around it, but I find a lot easier just to use Koraidon's Climb Upgrade and you'll already notice it on the left side there. You could also hop across from the other side. Either way, this is where the stake is located, and there's another one really, really close by over here. So we're going to mark that on our map, and you'll see the game turns us around. 
so we can just glide our way over. Or almost fall, but we're gonna make a big jump and just glide our way straight across towards this tree. I could have sworn this is where the stake is, but I guess it's actually a little bit higher up. So again, having Koraidon's climb upgrade is almost essential, I would say. All the way up, and you'll notice this little pond. So again, I'm going to show you the map just in case you want to see the exact location it's on by this little pond. Now, the next one might be the most annoying in the whole game, and it is located at the very top of this spiral-looking staircase. And you'll notice it's actually at the very tippy top of that very tall spiral mountain. And it can take quite a while to get all the way up there, especially if you don't have Koraidon's climb upgrade. I know because I tried climbing up there myself in a previous episode. So needless to say, I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit here to when we get a little bit closer to the mountain. Eventually you'll make it all the way to the top and your reward will be the seventh stake of the South Province. So let's pull it out of the ground. Now the final stake of the South Province is actually located very close to the Grass Wither Shrine itself by this pond. So I'm gonna set that as my destination and from the very top of this cliff, we should be able to fly pretty close to it. So we're gonna fly towards the south. Of course, Koraidon can't fly infinitely, which is a shame considering how fast and far the legendaries were flying in the intro of the game, but we'll go as far as we can and eventually just make our descent down by this pond. Thankfully, the stake isn't too far off from here, so I guess we might as well just run the rest of the way. It seems my marking was a little bit off as the actual location of the stake was over here, actually right above the shrine. So let's go ahead and grab it. That should be the final eighth stake, which means that the shrine will unlock after you pull it out with a skrrr. A mysterious cry comes from the shrine, and it's literally right below us, so we can just drop down, or not? I don't know why the game is so picky about when your character can fall sometimes. Oh, there we go. Thankfully, Rotom saves us, and yeah, literally the shrine is right over here, which is now unlocked if you collected all eight stakes, which means we can encounter the first ruinous legendary. But I definitely recommend saving the game first because Immediately after you interact with the shrine, you will encounter the legendary. Well, I guess we have one last chance to say no, but why would I do that? I'm ready to fight our first treasure of ruin. They rattle, rattle, and a few rumbles. And a kerbang to top things off. We will encounter the grass and dark evil snail. Or scribe? Whoa. This thing is so weird. We got Wo Qian, the Tablets of Ruin. And you'll notice immediately its ability kicks in. It actually shares the same name as the Pokemon itself, the Tablets of Ruin. And of course, I forgot to buy Quick Balls. Great. Well, you can see I've got Gallade here with me because it has access to both False Swipe and Hypnosis, which puts enemies to sleep making it one of the best Pokemon to use when trying to catch legendaries. We're gonna do that right now, actually. Oh, I love that it closes its eyes. Thank goodness they updated the game with that, because it was really weird back before when uh, Pokemon wouldn't close their eyes properly. Good times, right? Feels like forever ago since that happened, and yet no more patches have happened since to fix all the other bugs in the game. Either way, I'm gonna go Swords Dance since our first False Swipe barely did any damage, probably due to its ability, which decreases the attack of all Pokemon on the field by 25%, including its own allies in a double battle, for example. And all the Treasures of Ruin have a twist on this ability, but they lower different stats and probably shouldn't have gone for another Swords Dance. Huh. Awuju is dead. I guess Phoebe, since she's got the nuzzle, and I do want to try to put this legendary to sleep or paralyze it. Basically, some kind of status ailment that'll help us make it easier to catch. And sleep slash paralysis are the only ones that actually affect that, so... The other thing you've probably noticed, the name is a little bit peculiar for a Pokemon. Wo Qian 
definitely Chinese inspired and you'll notice the other members of the Ruinous Quartet also have very Chinese traditional names which has led a lot of Pokemon fans to speculate if the next region might actually be based on China. Oh, this dude's got Giga Drain though. Okay. That's going to make things a lot more annoying. I almost want to risk going for a close combat, but I feel like we might knock it out. I mean, it does have that ability that lowers attack though. And of course, we kill it. I don't think this thing respawns. Oh, wait. It actually does go back into the shrine. Well, in that case, I'll be right back, buddy. A few moments later. According to the internet, apparently these legendaries respawn every 10 minutes or so, which means that if we interact with the shrine now, I'm pretty sure it should work, please. Oh, a faint sound is coming from the shrine, nice. Well, before we touch it, I should definitely prepare my team because I'm pretty sure yeah, I should have just healed at the Pokemon Center. You know what? I think we're fine though, because the Hypnosis seemed to work pretty dang well against Ting Lu. So I'm going to try that again here against Wu Qian. Please don't one-shot it. Please don't one-shot it. Oh, okay. That actually did way less than I thought, but it confuses it too. I seem to have forgotten about that little detail. So if it hurts itself in confusion a few too many times, that could be very bad for us. Or maybe it doesn't hurt itself at all. Okay. Well, I don't think I'm even going to try hitting it anymore. In fact, oh, I forgot to go for my quick ball. Whoops. It's also no longer nighttime. So maybe we go for a nest ball. Pretty sure this is better on Pokemon that are low level, which Wu Qian definitely is not. I'm just really scared that it's going to knock itself out, so I'm not going to go for any more Axe Kicks. We're just going to wait for it to eventually break out of confusion or do something. Okay, maybe not. Please snap out of confusion. Please snap out of confusion. Yeah! It snapped out of confusion, bro. We have gotten so lucky with these legendaries, I swear. <laughs> so we got it down to red health, which means it's time to start... Throwing away those Premier Balls, at least until Lokix gets knocked out, and then we can swap back to Gallade and throw a Hypnosis, unless we catch it again on the first ball! Are you kidding me? What? Okay, that has to be luck, right? There's no way we just so happened to catch it on the first try, as we have the Dark and Grass Wu Qian, the grudge of a person punished for writing the king's evil deeds upon wooden tablets has clad itself in dead leaves to become a Pokemon. These legendaries are so sick. Like, I love the backstory and I love that the history teacher also gives us a little more context about them. It also has a new move called Ruination, which I believe all of the Ruin Trio have, and it cuts the target's HP in half, so it'll always do half of the enemy's health, kind of like Super Fang. Next up, we're going after the treasure known as the Sword of Ruin, sealed inside the Ice Wren Shrine by the eight glowing yellow stakes found within the bottom left quadrant. And the first stake we're going to be going after is actually in the town of Cascarrafa. To make things easier for ourselves, we're going to fly there. And the first stake is actually going to be located behind the gym, so I highly recommend having all of Koraidon's upgrades, that way you can just way more easily get to where you need to be. Even though Kodaidon sometimes likes to slip, it'll eventually cling onto the wall. You can climb up and make your way behind the gym, like I said, where we will find our first stake. Tucked away behind this big old tree. Now from here, we can actually walk, or rather ride, to our next destination, which is going to be on this little strip of land right here. And for the sakes of this video, I'm just going to ride on Kodaidon to show you guys how to get there in case you don't have those ruins unlocked yet. It's actually very close to the West Province Area 1 Watchtower, so if you have that unlocked, uh, you can just fly there, but it shouldn't be too far away, and as long as we don't run into any Pokemon, we'll be a-okay. We're gonna fly right over the Team Star base, which if you haven't taken on yet, you might not be able to do, because they'll like call you out like you need to actually fight them, but if you have beaten this Team Star base, you'll have no problems. So again, you could fly over to those ruins over there. That's one of the uh, flying taxi spots, but we're going to head over this way and you'll already see the stake at the very top of this cliff. Or you can make your way here from Cascarrafa like I just did as we pull out our second stake. 
Now the next stake for this legendary is actually not too far away from the one we just collected. In fact, it's right over here in this tiny little corner. So we're gonna mark that as our location and you'll see the game automatically turns you to face the way that you marked on your map. So it's very convenient. And in case you didn't know, you can set your map so that it's always facing north by pushing in the right analog stick, I think. Now we're gonna head straight to it, fly on over these cliffs, and the stake will actually be located in this little quarter right at the bottom of the cliffs. It should be pretty easy to spot. Three down, five more to go, but our next stake is actually a little bit farther than the few we've collected so far, and I recommend flying over to the West Province Area 1 Pokemon Center if you have it unlocked. If you don't have this Pokemon Center unlocked, it's actually right by where you fight the Titan Bomber Deer, actually near the shrine, so you could save this one for last, but I'm gonna go ahead and mark it on my map. And again, you don't necessarily need to have the climb upgrade for this, you could also walk the long way around, there's the path over here that leads to the windmills, but we're basically gonna make our way towards the mountain where you fight the Titan Bomber Deer. But before getting to it, you'll notice there is a giant crevice and the stake is located in the middle of it. I almost missed it, but thankfully we didn't. Now, like I said, you could save this one for last because it is very near the shrine, but either way, our next stake will be located over this way. In fact, where I've marked on the map is exactly where it is on that little piece of green. So you could fly back to the Pokemon Center if you want. I find that teleporting sometimes takes actually longer, so I just decided to walk my way over there. But we're just gonna go right over these mountains and you'll notice the stake down below at the edge of the cliff. Again, the next stake is not too far away, straight down south. It's gonna be on this little piece of green right here, so we'll mark it on our map. And Koraidon will once again face directly towards the direction you're going. It's actually gonna be on the way towards Alfornada or the Psychic Gym City near the cave that leads inside it, but we're not gonna head into the cave, we're just gonna stay on top of this sort of cliffside by it, and you'll know you're going the right way when you notice this flying taxi man that we're just gonna run right past, and the stake is actually up on top of this cliff, so let's climb up and grab it. Our next stake is even closer by, but it might be a little bit tricky to acquire, and that's because it's inside of a cave, but not the Alfornada cave that is nearby. It's actually a different cave that's a little bit more easy to miss down by the beach. So we're gonna fly down this way and then fall all the way down. Not onto the beach though, we're gonna wanna land on this grassy area and you'll notice the cave right over here. And as we head inside of it, you'll soon be able to spot. I thought we might already see the stake, but I guess it didn't quite load in. Eventually you will see it in the middle of this path and we can now grab it. Now the final stake might just be the trickiest one to get and that's because there's really nowhere close to it you can teleport to. I mean, I guess this watchtower, but just in case you don't have it, I'm gonna head there from the bug gym city of Portondo, which you can see is behind me. We're gonna want to cross the river over to the South Provinces Area 4. You can also get here from Alfornada, the Psychic Gym City, but you'd have to climb all the way up the mountain and then back around it. And I find that this way is a little bit faster, though either way, you're gonna have to walk quite a bit to get here. But I decided not to speed up the gameplay since a few people found that confusing in my previous location guide. So with a little bit of patience, you can already see the stake right there across the river. I was a little bit off with my marking, but you can see there, just head right across and grab our final stake for this legendary at least. There's an ominous black stake. You mean orange, right? I mean, I guess the stake is black, the glow is orange, but cuckoo? What the heck kind of cry is that? That's what I just said, a mysterious cry, which means our quest is complete and we're gonna wanna head back to the Ice Wren Shrine. So again, I recommend flying to this Pokemon Center we were at earlier. We're gonna head back up towards Bombardier's Mountain. And I absolutely love the way the moon looks in this game. Just the night sky in general is really, really pretty looking. Though the rest of the game might not be, you know, at least that's something. Anyway, we're gonna head up towards where the boulders start rolling, but 
Instead of heading all the way up the mountain, we're gonna take a left at the fork here and continue following the grassy path. And you'll notice a trainer over here that if you haven't battled yet, actually talks about the shrine, like she's looking for it. And it just so happens to be right below where she's standing. <laughs> I don't know how she didn't think to look down below the cliff. I guess it's a little bit dangerous, but once you've gotten all the stakes, you'll notice that the chains are actually gone, which means we can open this bad boy up and acquire our treasure. But first we're gonna wanna save just in case. Don't wanna end up accidentally killing the legendary like we did with the snail. Will you touch the shrine? Yes, we will. Oh, this is so awesome. Why do you touch it like that though? It's like he gave it a little tickle. I thought he was gonna place his palm on it. Kerbang! Oh my god, the lid has come flying off! And out comes a gummy worm! Cut, cut! Yo, what the heck? The swords! Why do they cut through it like that? So weird! We got Qian Pao, the Sword of Ruin! And you can see their special ability there actually lowers one of your stats, which is not good for Phoebe. But the main reason we've got Phoebe here is to get the nuzzle off. I highly, highly recommend using a Quick Ball if you don't mind what Pokeball you catch your Pokemon is. Quick Balls are definitely your best friend, at least on the first turn. Of course, we already missed that opportunity, but I have another kind of Pokeball in mind anyway, so let's go for our Double Shock and hopefully not kill it! Okay, that Double Shock, a little bit too close for comfort there, but I'll take it. We left it pretty much at the perfect amount of health to start chucking away some balls. And just in case, I also brought along Wuju with the False Swipe and Hypnosis. Highly recommend having a Gallade because it's one of the only Pokemon that has access to both of those moves, but personally, I like catching legendary Pokemon in Premier Balls, even though I know they don't have the greatest of catch rate. In fact, they have literally the same catch rate as a regular Pokeball, and considering legendary Pokemon aren't the easiest to catch, that means we're probably going to be here for a while, but I have the patience of a saint. I got a video loaded up in the background. So, I'm gonna just sit here for the next, uh, however long it takes watching YouTube until it catches. Unfortunately, you can't just run away and try to encounter the Pokemon again like you can with wild ones in this game, so you'd have to fully reset if you want to try to use a Premier Ball on the first turn again. But they are the most effective type of ball, at least on the first turn. Other than that, I would say Dusk Balls are the next best, but it has to be nighttime, which it actually is nighttime for me right now. And as I mentioned at the beginning, it's definitely easiest to spot these stakes at nighttime. Now, along with the rest of the Treasures of Ruin, or Ruinous Quartet, as people are calling them, these Pokemon have a catch rate of 6, which is a 2.6% chance of catching in a regular Pokeball at full health. Not very high. I mean, it does become a little bit easier when they're at red HP with paralyzing, but still not very likely to catch in a regular Pokeball, so we might be here for a while. So rather than make you guys sit through the rest of this, I'm gonna just cut to when we actually catch it and just let you know that it took 17 Premier Balls in total, which is not too bad. Finally, we've caught Qian Pao in the Premier Ball. I ended up wasting quite a lot of them though, I wish I had more, but the Dark and Ice Ruinous Pokemon can control 100 tons of fallen snow. It plays around innocently by leaping in and out of avalanches it has caused. This is by far the coolest looking of the Ruinous trio, at least it's my favorite, Dark and Ice, and a lot of people are calling it basically a legendary version of Sneasel slash Weavile because of its Dark Ice typing and it also uses a lot of physical moves. Now what happens when we actually inspect the shrine? Faint writing is carved into it. The ruinous sword seal has been broken. Oh, and now we've actually caught it. I should have added it to my party though so we can actually see it. Whoa, it's actually so much longer than I thought. Kind of reminds me of cat dog, except you know, it doesn't have a dog head on its tail, but like the way that it's so slender and almost stretchy. 
and a lot bigger than I expected, though I guess it is a legendary. I could definitely imagine myself riding around on Xi'an Pao instead of Korai Don. That'd be pretty sick. The third treasure of Ruin we're going after is sealed by the eight green glowing stakes found within the top left quadrant of the map and will unlock the Vessel of Ruin inside of the Ground Blight Shrine. I feel like the best place to begin our hunt is actually back in Cascarrapa, but this time the north side near the desert. Now from the Pokemon Center here, we're gonna go across the desert and mark this little dot up on the green cliff. And it's actually an area that is a little bit easy to miss because it's kind of on top of the Colonnade Hollow, one of the 10 sites of Paldea. So we're gonna journey across the desert and on the other side, we're gonna jump up to these cliffs and climb to the top or bash right into a Dawn fan, you know, same difference basically. <laughs> But on the second try, we get on up to this green hilly area, and we're going to make our way to the hole that I marked on the map, which I actually kind of passed. But back over this way, you'll notice a very circular hole, and you're going to want to be careful going down it, because right on top is where we'll find our first yellow stake. Or did I say green earlier? Again, we're inside of the Colonnade Hollow, so you could also fly to the taxi spot available if you come here before, and then venture inside of it but our next stake is actually going to be right outside of the colonnade so we're going to mark it on our map and head straight to it i'm trying to do these in the easiest order if you don't want to keep using the flying taxi over and over so just ride right through the colonnade and then down the cliff and you'll notice the stake pretty close by unfortunately those are the only two stakes that are really close to each other as the rest of them are kind of spread all over Casaroya Lake with the first one being on this little island that I've just marked there So we're gonna begin our long trek across the lake Which you're definitely gonna want your Kodai Dawn upgrades I mean you can't even swim without having beaten at least two of the Titan Pokemon Which I find kind of crazy now in hindsight that at one point in the game we couldn't even swim I don't know it just feels like a thing that we've always had but I believe the stake should be up on top of Never mind. Maybe it's Oh wait, it's actually on the other island right over, the smaller island right next door. Okay, <laughs> I thought I was going crazy for a second, like I already got that stake, but nope, there it is. And speaking of islands, our next stake is actually on the biggest island here in Casaroya Lake, which does have a fly spot. If you took on the Titan, you should have that available, so you could instead just use the flying taxi service. But again, I want to make my way there the good old fashioned way, so across we glide. Even though we can't quite make it all the way to the top, we can simply climb the rest of the way and up one more cliff, we've got our fourth steak. Just wish it was a New York strip. Kinda hungry. Now, I mentioned earlier that this is my least favorite area to collect the steaks in, and that is because the next one is all the way down here, which means we've got to swim pretty much across the whole lake, and then the next steak is also across the lake and there aren't really any like fly spots nearby i mean i suppose the lighthouse isn't too far but still it's not really the closest with much patience you will eventually make it across though and hopefully not run into any pokemon it's a little tricky here in the lake because there's so dang many of them but up on this little cliff we'll find our next stake the next one isn't quite as annoying but still not exactly easy either and it's located straight to the north around this area my marking might be a little bit off but i'm sure once we get near we'll see the stake across the river though we've got a very large plane we're just going to keep running straight across eventually make it to this little pond and once you cross the second river you'll know that you're finally near your destination all the way in the northwest corner of paldea our sixth stake now, for the 7th, I definitely recommend flying over to either Glaciado's Grasp or Glaciado Mountain itself because the stake is actually closer to that. Once we make it to the Pokemon Center, I'll show you the exact location so the game can point us in the right direction, and I believe it is right around here. So let's mark it and start making our way down into the West Province. I wish Goraidon could glide us all the way there, but unfortunately, there's no unlimited gliding, though I have seen a glitch recently that apparently lets you fly across Paldea at like super speed, which is pretty crazy, but 
I haven't tried that myself yet. We just got the regular old glide, which means it's going to take a bit longer to make it to our destination. But again, with a little patience and a whole lot of side ducks, we're going to go all the way down this green hill canyon cliff. And eventually, you'll see our second to last stake. And the final one is once again located pretty close to where the actual shrine is. I believe here in the corner of Glaciado Mountain, which is going to be quite a long journey. In fact, if you have the North Province Area 3 Pokemon Center, I'd recommend just flying there. It's the one right outside of Team Star's Fairy Base. And I will remark the stake location just so the game points us in the right direction. As we begin our journey to the final stake of Casa Royal Lake. Okay, it seems that no matter which way you go, it's definitely still annoying making it to this stake because we had to climb pretty much halfway across the mountain, but we're trying to get to this autumnal forest in the top right. And I wish there was some kind of Pokemon Center or landmark that we could fly to closer to here, but I haven't necessarily found it. Now what we're trying to find is basically where the autumn forest and the mountain meet right near this cave you will notice the final stake guarded by a whole clan of Titans, it seems but we're just gonna ignore them and climb up to grab it and since this is the final green or yellow one or whatever color i'll show off the full cutscene as we pull it out and once again we get a nice dong and hear a mysterious cry coming from the shrine which of course means we can now catch our third Ruinous Legend. I guess my marker was a little bit off, so if you want a more exact location, here it is. But now that we've got all eight, it's time to make our way to the Ground Blight Shrine. So again, I recommend doing this one last since the shrine is actually really close to it compared to the long ass trek we just took. Now we've just got to fly right over the mountain, which I guess is called Sakurat Trail, like the official name of this autumn-like forest in the northwest isn't really all that important like there's barely anything to do up in this area besides just exploring and catching a few pokemon you'll notice this little crevice and at the bottom of it we've got the green shrine of ruin even though the stakes definitely looked more yellow but i guess the circle thing is more green so as always, I recommend saving the game here and bringing a Pokemon with either False Swipe, Hypnosis. A faint sound is coming from within. Will we touch the shrine? Yes. Let us go ahead and tickle it. I don't know why the character reaches out like that. Like, you think they just put their palm on it, but again, no. That's not how we do things here in Pokemon. But inside of this shrine, we're going to find some kind of deer with a bowl on its head. Yeah, this is definitely the strangest of the Ruinous Bunch, but it is going to be known as Ting Lu, the Vessel of Ruin, with the signature ability named right after it. And this time I finally got some Quick Ball, so let's go ahead and toss it, and maybe it'll work out like back in my old playthroughs. Of course, I spoke too soon. I don't know if I've talked about the music yet. Man, we got another banger on our hands. And we miss our hypnosis too, that's just great. At least Throat Chop isn't super effective, but when it gets a critical hit, it definitely is. Okay, well, so much for using Gallade. <laughs> Seems we're going back to the tried and true method of Phoebe with the Nuzzle, though actually I think Ting Lu is a ground type, so our Nuzzle strategy isn't even going to work. Okay, this guy's being extra annoying, isn't he? We're going to have to use a totally different strategy for this guy, and I do believe it is going to be Mac and Cheese with the Super Fang, which always does half of the enemy's HP, so if you use it three times, it generally drops the opponent down to like the red HP zone. Sometimes it might take a couple more, though I don't think Mac and Cheese are actually going to survive to drop it all the way to red, unfortunately. It's okay though, we got it down to yellow, which means Wuju, if we can hit a hip Hypnosis, can go for False Swipe after and drop it to red, but again, we miss. Thank goodness it goes for Ruination, which we learned always does half of your health, and you know what? I'm gonna just go for the False Swipe right now, since we know we're faster, we can do that, and at least get it down to red. 
though it didn't do nearly as much damage as I was hoping, this Ting Lu character might be a little more difficult to catch than I expected. We might as well start trying though, because the only way we're going to make this easier is by hitting a Hypnosis. So I revived Gallade and we're just going to start tossing away the Premier Balls. Oh, I forgot! I have the Rocky Helmet. Oh, thank goodness that didn't kill it. That would have been real bad, but we did get its HP down a little bit more. So now, if we do actually hit Hypnosis, that's pretty much as close as we're gonna get, or I guess the easiest it's gonna be to catch. Oh, finally we hit one! Yes! Go to bed, you weird deer bowl thing. I don't think it's supposed to be a deer. I forgot what creature or animal it's actually supposed to represent. Though I suppose I could look it up online real quick. Since I'ma just be throwing premier balls anyway, I got my hands free to do a little research, or... You've got to be kidding me! We caught it on the first try! With the premier ball too! Okay! I guess the Hypnosis Fall Swipe strategy is more OP than I thought, as we've got Ting Lu, the dark and ground. Ruinous Pokemon. The fear poured into an ancient ritual vessel has clad itself in rocks and dirt to become this Pokemon. You know, I guess seeing it now in the Pokedex, it does look a little bit cooler. Finally, we have the Beads of Ruin locked inside the Fire Scourge Shrine by the eight glowing blue stakes found throughout the top right quadrant of the region. But we're gonna begin our state hunt at the Lavincia Lighthouse. And this is actually the only one down near this area, so let us fly. And I'll go ahead and mark the actual location of the state, which is pretty nearby on top of this mountain. So I definitely recommend climbing up with Koraidon. You could again go all the way around, but there's really no need, as you can way more easily climb all the way to the top. And at the base of this massive tree, we will find our first Cyan Glowing Stake. The rest of them are actually pretty far away from here, so let's zoom out a bit, and I definitely recommend just flying your way over to the Glaciato Gym. So if you don't have that Pokemon Center, you're gonna end up walking a lot more than necessary. Because from here, we're gonna go straight down south to this little green area you'll notice on the mountain, and it's actually behind the Pokemon Center, so we're gonna hop right off the top of the mountain and glide our way down. Now, as usual, Koraidon is not going to make it all the way there with the glide. Eventually, it will start falling. I just realized I always say Koraidon, but all of this applies to Pokemon Violet players as well. Just, you know, you'll be riding on a much more futuristic legendary. Either way, keep flying your way down to the edge of the mountain, and eventually, you'll make it to the edge of Glaciato as the snow starts to melt and you'll find this greenish area with the neck stake on it. Now from here, we're gonna fly across the Tag Tree Thicket, which is the area where you fight the Team Star Poison Leader. But we're not actually gonna head down there just yet. We're just gonna ride straight across around the edge of Glaciato Mountain up until you reach this bridge right here, and then you're safe to hop off. I don't know if we'll quite make it with the glide, so just to be safe, I'm gonna drop down right here and then glide again because we want to make it to this cliffside over here with the lone tree and underneath it you will see the next light blue stake. So let's slowly glide our way down and collect it. The next stake from here you could technically ride to but it's a lot easier to just fly to this North Province Pokemon Center unless you don't have it in which case I guess you're gonna have to do a bit more walking because the next stake is just a little bit farther up north on this rocky mound, so go ahead and set that as your location and make your way there. It's gonna be at the very tippy top of this very steep slope or little mountain, hill, whatever you wanna call it. Just make your way up right into the orange sky and at the very tippy top, you got the next stake. Pretty easy so far, I gotta say. Unfortunately, that ends here because the next stake is all the way up north where the mountain meets the sea. So let's set our destination here and start flying across to these cliffs. I always say gliding is easier, so I'm gonna climb up to the top and that way we get a little bit higher of a vantage point as we set off with our glide. Even though, as always, we're gonna start descending way sooner than we need to, but it's okay. 
because there's actually a TM I never picked up over here too, so might as well grab that and keep heading up the mountain as eventually you'll make it to the edge where you're gonna wanna jump all the way down to where the snow has melted once again and right in front of the beach we will find our fifth or sixth stake. I kinda lost count at this point. Either way, our next stake is gonna have us fly back or rather to the Area 2 Pokemon Center this time also known as the area with the bamboo forest. And it's actually gonna be really close to the Pokemon Center itself, right up on these cliffs. So set that as your destination and the game will turn you right around so you know which direction to actually start climbing because there are a lot of cliffs and mountains around here, but this is the one we're looking for, at least for this next date I wanna grab. And there's another stake really close by, but it's right by the shrine, so I'm gonna skip over it and instead head over to these ruins. And there isn't really a Pokemon Center closer, so we're just gonna set off from here and start making our way around the cliff sides as per usual. I like to stay up high and just keep jumping around these mountains right through Team Star's fighting crew base. And the stake is gonna be on the other side across the Team Star camp. Which reminds me that you can actually rematch the Team Star leaders. Haven't quite done that yet, so perhaps there's still a few more things to do in this game. You'll eventually make it to this area with a giant mountain in the middle of a canyon. Which you could go over, but you're gonna end up coming back down anyway, so I'll just fly right around it. And eventually you'll make it to these ruins with our next stake. And we've got just one more left, which is actually back near the Pokemon Center, or rather, right by the shrine, so we might as well... Oh, I didn't know you could actually fly to these if you've already visited them, huh? Well, for the sakes of this video, let's pretend I haven't been there yet, and we'll set that as our destination, because the final stake is literally right outside of the cave entrance, so... From these ruins, we're just gonna run right past all these Pokemon, and back towards the Bamboo Forest whose name I always seem to forget. But there's this area with a bunch of really spiky mountains. That's the general direction. In fact, I believe this is the Fury Falls, one of the 10 sites of Paldea. And we're gonna make our way all the way to the top of this waterfall. You'll notice a cave entrance, but to get our final stake, we actually have to go a little bit higher up, right over the cave. We will have our final stake for the final treasure of ruin. So once and for all, let's pull it out. Wonder what kind of mysterious cry we'll get this time. Sp sp? That's definitely the most mysterious cry we've gotten so far. And like I said, this final stake is literally right over where you find the legendary. I'm not quite sure why I hopped off Koraidon, because we're gonna have to get back on him to hop in the water here, because the final shrine is definitely the coolest location of them all, as it's literally inside of the cave. Look at how many Pokemon there are in here too, dude. So cool. Once again, we're gonna save the game because once we interact with this shrine, we will be encountering our final legendary as a faint sound comes from within for the fourth and final time. Gonna tickle it. <laughs> rattle, rattle, rumble, 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 rumble. Rattle, 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 rattle. Kablam! It's a little fish! Oh, it's an angry fish! Splashy! That's right! The final member of the quartet is based off a fish, and it's known as the Beads of Ruin, Chi Yu. Though it might look like a water type, this is actually a fire and dark type, totally breaking our expectations, or I guess subverting, I think is the term people say, for when something is totally the opposite of what you expected. This is a little fire fish, and as its name implies there, well, all the ruinous quartet, if you haven't noticed yet, are based on objects, with this one being based off little beads, which are its eyes. Got it down to the red zone, which means it's time for hypnosis, and it actually hits. Oh my god, I didn't realize its little eyes could close. Or I guess I didn't think those beads were its eyes. I don't know what I'm saying, but let's go for our premier ball, and I thought that was a critical capture for a second. That would have been the cherry on top after how lucky we got with the last two legendaries. We got a crit capture on this last one, but of course not. 
So let's just keep chucking those away as Chi Yu continues to be fast asleep. The Premier Balls definitely don't seem to be working as well as they did earlier. I haven't really talked about it, but this legendary theme, like most of the other music in this game, absolute banger. I love the almost Aladdin sound it's got going for it, like it totally reminds me of Agrabah for some reason. Even though I know they're supposed to be Chinese inspired, and Aladdin's like Arabic. But I don't know, it's got some Middle Eastern sort of sound to it. But I could be wrong, and maybe this is actually Chinese or Asian inspired instead. Either way, I really like the sound of it. Like, this is another banger coming out from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Kinda looking like Chi Yu might be the most annoying to catch of them all. Rightfully so, since it is the final of the quartet. I expected a bit more of a challenge, or I guess annoyance, since this isn't really difficult, it's more about luck. Wait, my last Pokemon is Whoopi, so if it hits us, we have the Rocky Helmet. Though I think that only works with physically contacting moves, and the only one Chi Yu seems to have is Lava Plume, so I don't think the Rocky Helmet will hurt it. Either way, we're running out of Pokemon, so I'm probably just done here. You know what, since we're probably gonna die anyway, I'm kinda curious what happens if we run away. We can't run away, okay. Can you even critical capture a legendary? I'm gonna assume so, but I've never seen it. Hey, looks like we don't need it, cause we finally caught Chi Yu. It took a second attempt, but hey, I'll take it. As the dark and fire ruinous Pokemon controls flames burning over 5400 degrees. It casually swims through the sea of lava it creates by melting rock and sand. Jeez. I like that we can see its patterns a little bit better too now in the Pokedex. And we'll also check out... Well, actually, let's add it to the party since now we've got all four. I want to actually see them interacting in the picnic. But first, we got to add it into the decks. Now let's head back to where it all began and check out our ruinous quartet in action. You can see them there. The snail, the deer... The saber to tiger and the freaky firefish. Yes, we get a nice first person perspective. At least of the snail. The fish seems to be a little bit antisocial right now. Oh, are you falling asleep? No, don't do that to me, buddy. These Pokemon are pretty freaking weird, I gotta admit. Like, I guess I'm 50 50. I like the fish and the saber tooth. Not as much of a fan of the snail and the deer. Well, actually, the snail in itself is pretty cool too. It's got like. Mahjong tiles going up its back. I guess they're not specifically Mahjong, but like tiles that make a little spiral going up its back. And you can see one of them has this kind of thing inscribed into it, which is really cool. The deer is probably my least favorite. Like if I had to rank them, the deer would be fourth, then the snail, then probably the fish. And number one would definitely be the saber tooth tiger. It's so freaking cool and cute actually when it's asleep like this. Though I'm not a big fan of how its tusks seem to go right through its jaw. I don't know, that's a little weird. So let me know what you think of the Treasures of Ruin. Which one is your favorite? And don't forget to smash that like button if you enjoyed this video. And stay tuned because there's still a few more episodes left to wrap up everything here in Scarlet and Violet. Stay tuned and I'll catch you then.